Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Power Tool Workbench series. In this video we're going to clean up everything we did in the previous episodes and get it looking all lovely and then we're going to join frames A and B together and frames C and D together. Let's go. Right, so I've tidied up all the frames, they're all flush, they're all clean, whatever, they're done. And I've assembled this cabinet from A to B, the cabinet on the left hand side, and I had a thought that when I put the OSB in the bottom of here, it's going to be supported around all the edges. So it's going to be supported by the rebate here, probably going to domino it into the front and back stretches, and then in here, probably screw it through. However, OSB is obviously not the strongest of materials and I'm worried that if it's only supported around the edge, all it will take is a bit of pressure in the middle just for it to split out on all those edges and then the bottom of this cabinet will fall out and I won't be able to get it back in again, which would be quite annoying. So I've been thinking about what to do and I'm gonna do everything I just said, so rebate, domino, screw, but then I'm also gonna put a stretcher along here as well to help stop any of that flex in the center of the OSB board. And once the cabinet's assembled, I'm gonna flip it over and put some brackets underneath to support the OSB a little bit more on all these edges as well. So I've got one bit of material, which is long enough to do this. Looks a bit minging and it's left over from when I was renovating this workshop. However, it's not gonna be seen and once I clean it up with the planar thicknesser, it should look okay providing it deals with this bitumen well. Oh dear. So now it comes time to clean up around my machines again because it has become an absolute state. The past few weeks while I've been doing the extraction run and building this thing and all other random bits, you could start making some noise with these things again.
All right, so I've got these to a nice wedge fit. It's gonna get the equal spacing we need, whatever that is, 990. Oh, that's easy enough, 330. All right, there should be a pretty good wedge fit with these. All right, so to attach the stretches in place, we're gonna to need to do a plunging cut with the domino, which is a, it takes a lot to get your head around. I'm gonna be doing a instructional video on the domino at a later date, but this will give you a rough idea of how it works, but do not worry yourself if you can't understand what's going on. So I'm gonna get a bit of OSB to begin with, just so I can get these flush with the top, so I know where it needs to sit. All right, so I've got the right height. So now I'm gonna do a little mark on this stretcher here and then I'm gonna do a star on this one so I know that that is gonna be my reference face. And then on this stretcher, there is also gonna be a star there and there. So I know that those are gonna be my reference points. That will make a little bit more sense later. Probably won't, but I'll do my best. And then I need to get the spacing of the dominoes in there. So I'm probably gonna get in the way of the camera as I do this, I do apologize. Mark there, and then something like that probably there you go take this out and then that mark that i put on marking where the stretcher was just going to square that up so i've got a definite line there then i'll try and do the same on these ones too then we'll take them to the workbench to get them dominoed so i've got my two lines here and this component as we said is going to sit here to the right hand side of that line which means that the dominoes need to go in this area here somewhere. So to do that, I'm gonna extend those domino lines to go either side of that line. And then what we're gonna be doing here is a plunge cut like this. So in order to get this accurate, this domino needs to sit exactly on that line. So to make that easier, you can get a bit of wood and clamp it to that line, which will then cover up the star mark that I did before. Then you can transfer these lines to the top edge of the OSB you got here. And then on the bottom of the domino, you've got some lines here that you can line up with those marks I've just transferred to the top. And that should be in the correct location. All right, so we've got the two domino slots and if I put them together, you can see that that is how it needs to go. So that means that because the domino slots are, I don't know, what's that about? eight millimeters from that front line it needs to be on the top of here eight millimeters down from this front edge here so they're not going to be centered on this one but that doesn't matter at all the main thing is that that distance is going to be eight millimeters and that distance there is going to be eight millimeters so when it goes together it should be flush with that line we've got there so because we've been referencing off the bottom here by covering up that star and making a fence we're going to do exactly the same one here we've got the star here going to cover it up by flipping it over and then we're going to reference off the bottom of the domino to give us that eight millimeter offset. So just to reiterate what's happening here, we're referencing off the bottom to plunge into the end of this component. And we were also referencing off that bottom to plunge into the base here by creating a false fence. Takes a lot to get your head round, but if you've used a biscuit jointer before, you might have done something like this in the past. I don't know. So I've transferred the lines from the stretcher to the top so I can see exactly what I'm doing. And I've got a line on the front of the domino here that will allow me to see when it is in line. All right, so as you can see, it is not central at all, which is what we expected because I was referencing off the base of the domino. That is one fixed distance, but that distance between the edge of the material and the start of the domino is exactly the same as that line and the start of the domino, in theory anyway. Let's see what happens when we put these together. Oh yeah, look at that. As you can see, it is spot on the line and hopefully, Good, so if I put the OSB on top, that is still flush with the top edge as well due to the careful marking that I did as well. So if that made no sense whatsoever, do not worry, I will be doing a tutorial video on the domino at some point in the future, hopefully with a better explanation than the star marks and all that that I did just now. It's a lot to get your head around, but you know it is possible now at least. Lovely job, fits well. So now I need to get that OSB sheet 
down here, which means I need to move this across and then I'm going to cut that sheet up to fit the bottom of both of these cabinets. Well, I've really got to plan this glue up well because that was stressful to get in the bottom of this frame. But without glue, oh, what's that? No, it's fine. <laughs> without glue, it's holding perfectly fine. I remember this moment when I was building the Rubo workbench once I had the bottom frame assembled. Walking across this bit is one of the most satisfying bits of the project when you're building big workbenches like this. It's like if it can hold my fat ass, then it should be all right for all the work I'm due to do in the future. Yeah. And it probably doesn't need it, given the fact I can walk over it, but I'm gonna put some dominoes in the front edge here as well, just to make sure it is properly secure. Right, so I'm not going to bore you with more footage of me sanding panels or anything like that. As a brief overview as to what has been done, we have dry fitted the smaller cabinet together to ensure everything lines up and fits well together, which it does. But before adding glue to it, we need to make sure there are a few things in place first. To begin with, make sure that the bottom panel is dominoed into the front and back stretchers. Secondly, I need to make sure that there are clearance holes drilled in the side panel within frame C that will go through to connect to the bottom panel of the cabinet and the divider at the back of the drawers. As I said, these are clearance holes. If you're unsure as to what a clearance hole is, then I've done a video on it like a year ago. Feel free to watch that. It's a really quick one. And then I also drilled clearance holes on the underside of the cabinet that connected to the middle divider as well. And on the third side of the middle divider, I dominoed that to the outside leg within frame D. That was all the preparation needed for the smaller cabinet. And once all those holes were drilled and dominoed, the cabinet was ready to be assembled.
All right, so we're going to do some trickery with the domino again because when I get frame B into position, there we go. As you can see, with these first two edges, I'm able to get the domino in there flat, referencing off the bed like this domino is primarily designed to do. But then in here, because I've got that panel already glued in place, I can't get in there a reference off this bed. So I'm gonna to have to go back to the method of referencing off the base of it instead in order to do a plunge cut into the edge down here, like that. All right, so I've just got round to doing the cuts referencing off the base of the domino. And this is why it's always worth checking what's gonna happen when you plunge the machine before actually doing it. I learned that the hard way in the last episode, as you remember. But if I was to do it here, that cutter can't go down enough in order to go in the center of the OSB here because the OSB is too thin. As you can see, or you might be able to see, it is probably gonna break out on top. So how do you get around this? Well, I'm sure there's a mathematical fancy way of doing it, but to be honest, I'm just gonna fudge it. I'm gonna reference off the bed, like I have done for all the other sides in order to centralize the bit on the edge of the OSB. And then when it comes to plunging it into frame B, I'm gonna reference off the base of the machine, but I'm just gonna shift it forwards a little bit, as you'll see in a minute, in order to line it up with the dominoes on the edge of the panel. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way, it's just you're having to measure things yourself rather than rely on the reference points of the domino itself. All right, so the dominoes start three and a half millimeters from the inside edge. Yeah, three and a half all the way along. So then on frame B, I just need to make sure that the dominoes start three and a half millimeters from that inside edge. So then that will be the edge of the domino hole and the rest of the domino should be sort of like around here somewhere. So then we'll measure where the cutter starts from the bottom of the domino. So that starts eight millimeters, eight and a half millimeters maybe. Now let's call that eight from the base of the machine. So then all I should have to do at this point is create a fence to reference the bottom of the machine against, but offset that from the edge five to 4.5 millimeters. Pretty sure that's correct anyway. Let's have a look. All right, let's do a little test. I'm not gonna plunge it fully. I'm just gonna nick that front surface and then measure where that cut is in relation to the inside edge. Now, in theory, this should all line up on this inside edge. Oh yeah. All right, so I've got no doubt this is gonna be a bit of a challenging one to assemble because there's so many bits to come together here and lock within the frames. I think it's gonna come down to gluing it together in two parts, most likely the bottom to begin with, and then once that's dried, we'll sandwich that between the two frames, as well as the two dividers that are in there as well. I'm gonna do a dry fit first to make sure it all goes together perfectly, no gaps at all. And then depending on how long that takes me to do the dry fit, I'll make a decision as to whether I want to break it down into two glue ups or do the whole thing in one hit, which would be amazing. Uh, but I think it's gonna be the former option most likely. All right, so I've got it all together within 15 minutes, which is well within the drying window of Type Bond 3, which is what I've been using throughout this project, especially given how cold it is at the moment. It's gonna take even longer to go off. So that's not the issue. The main problem I have with doing this all in one hit is that I don't actually have enough clamps, which has given me the incentive to buy more, which is good and bad. But uh, yeah, we've got a 1.5 meter clamp pressing there. Ideally, I need another one here, but the pressure is needed around all four sides. I also need to get pressure front to back for certain areas as well. Down here, I need to get an extra 1.5 meter. I haven't got enough of them. So what we're gonna do is glue the bottom together first, and then we'll sandwich that between the sides afterwards. All right, so this is the bit we'll be gluing together first. And to prevent any misalignments, 
once this is dried, we're gonna get all the clamps on this, get everything closed up, and all the screws in place that are holding the OSB to the supports underneath. Everything in place, all the clamps applied to this bit, but then I'm gonna assemble the rest of the frame around it and get this in situ. What that'll mean is when the glue is dried on here, it's definitely in the correct position because where I've made those domino holes slightly wider, it means these side components can move up and down ever so slightly in order to make assembly easier. But it also means that once the glue dries, there's potential for things to be misaligned when it comes to sandwiching this between frames A and B. We don't want that. So all the clamps are gonna be applied here and then we're gonna just dry fit the rest of the cabinet around it to ensure everything is in position. All right, so we're all clamped up front to back. Got screws going into the stretchers below the bottom of the cabinets, and those are pulled nice and tight. Probably can't see it. Can we see it? Yes, there we go. Look up there. So those are pulled nice and flat against those supports underneath, which adds a lot of rigidity to the frame. Now, once that has had about uh, 30 minutes in there, I'm gonna take these clamps off and then put them in horizontal, and that will close up gaps such as this, and the one round here as well in the rebate all the way along here. And I think I've got a gap at the front here as well. I just need to cross my fingers and hope that I haven't inadvertently glued these two sides on prematurely because I still need to take them off in order to get those internal frames in. So hopefully I cleaned up all that glue correctly. I'm really doubting myself, but we'll see in half an hour. So it's been a while, um, not entirely sure how long, but now is the moment of truth. Well, that's hopeful. There we go. <laughs> it's not really the moment of truth. I'm pretty confident these are not glued together, which is very, very um, relieving. Well, I guess there's no easy way to do this other than to just get started with it. There we go. So it's all glued together, and finally, I get a sense of scale of this thing. Everything's looking real nice. Uh, I've got it spaced on a bit of MDF below, so this is its true size. Plenty of room to the left, plenty of room to the right to get some more machines later on. This is gonna be insane when it's done. So that is it for this part. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, if you've got any questions, suggestions, or comments, chuck them in the comment section below. And if you want to support the channel, be sure to visit the Patreon link in the description. It's getting late, I'm going home. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.